Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll call this into order. At, Tom, what time is it? Oh, right now it's uh, 4 03. 4 03. All right, uh, questions, questions, comments, and concerns. Citizens? I think I may just like to make a comment. They're citizens. Um, yeah, I would just say I um, walked the new Crosstown Trail uh, oh. from Nautilus all the way to uh, Mystic, um, Mystic Old Town, uh, Mystic, Old, Mystic, Old, Mystic, Old Mystic Village. Yeah, yes. Old Mystic Village. Yep. So it took two days. Um, my meter registered it to okay. um, so 14. Um, yeah. It's cool. It's really it's, it's a neat thing to, to have. Okay. Um, it, it's, I know we're at the very, very, very beginning of it. It's, yeah, it yeah. needs some work, but it was yeah. Um, but it was cool to kind of do it and, and uh, yeah. sort of experience it with the all the different topics. Nice. So I commend <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody else who worked on it, putting it together and being excited to see it. Yeah. 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 And did you find it fairly easy to? Um, there... Each joint, the, the, the junction points, the waypoints need to be better explained. Yeah. Um, and then the other recommendation I would have I know in the city we have um, trails to come. And what I would say is we should just set up a, a temporary path around that of cities. Uh, so that if you don't know the areas, you, you're going to get. Lost. So just having a, you say this is a temporary way. You just come down, rejoin the roads with the other paths, and this path to develop the, the knowledge that offers that. So one thing I would say to that comment is that when I was developing the the trail marked on the on the map, based on what the, the graphs that the city um, executive director had put together. She, um, it, it was all very reasonable, exactly what I would have done also. I had heard with her, so I basically walked as best I could all of that, right? Not, it's very rough and there's no way of really doing it. Um, yeah. You try to do, because they still need a lot of work on that. But, but right now, as far as walking around it, I, I would just say stay on the, on the bike thing. That's, you know, that way yeah. you're not really generating, you know, some kind of hurdle. And that's probably what I should have done. Yeah, I just didn't know it. I kind of followed. Yeah, if you just stayed on the on the, on the waypoint okay. three to seven. Yeah, okay. That, that, way, that would have taken probably would have got would have got. Yeah. I was sort of following the the way no, the waypoints. Way, yeah. the exactly. waypoints on the hiking portion. Yeah. Are, are a little. If somebody wanted to use it today, uh, maybe just modify the. Say that. Well, this really hasn't been posted outside of a few people that yeah. provided it to in the application process. Right. Yeah. Really, that's one of the things we should put on the agenda for today is to talk right. about the next steps. Right. Uh, it, was, it was cool to do it. I mean, I'm glad I did it just to yeah. kind of experience it and just have that mark and or just document it. And you said it was it recorded. I put it 20 miles. Yeah, I did it in two days. Uh, 20 miles just recorded on my phone. And did you just like pitch a tent on the side of the road? <laughs> no, I went oh, from, I went that was to Haley Farm. Yeah. So that was day one. Then I went um from Kane where it joined yeah. all the way to the uh, old oh, cool. so those are the two chunks. And okay. stopped for lunch at <laughs> I saw you there. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good it's a perfect place to stop. Oh okay. uh, so those are the two places. And then nice. all the trail that I could walk. Yeah. I did. So there's an economic development thing across town trail. Yeah, right? I do. Stop at the yeah. restaurants to eat. Okay. Okay. I think I have. That's why you should have taken pasta on the way down. I actually stopped at Popeyes on the other day. Are you the way that was true? And I did that. So I did those are my two lunch. I, yeah, no, I, I commend it. I think it's, it's going to be really cool with the. Not a computer. That aren't easy, and, yeah. and you felt safe. 
Yeah. That there is. No, I mean. Yeah, no, no. no. Yeah, we've I've tried to stay off the major highways. Yeah. Not a group one or yeah. any place. Uh, yeah. Uh, on that. That's the whole thing about it. It's all too. Yeah. The area that was confusing, and I backed out of it right by the city hall and going down. Well, you should. The, the, uh, the, I mean, the, the municipal building. And I got almost. I ended up backing up. Oh, okay. Just because there's no road, there's no path on the highway. So oh, okay. Yeah, you know, you're talking about the one in the city. In the city. city. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And if you're walking that portion right there, it's it is not well marked. And that's because it's still dotted line. I, I didn't know how much. I kind of walked in and I got a little confused and I ended up. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, you were on the state up. Yeah, I got way up. Then oh, I okay. had to come back. I see what you did. So, yeah. Confused because yeah, I can't play yeah. right, right, right. It's uh, this is one of the area that needs a lot of a lot of work. Is that each one of the of the two sections that um, the city is working on needs yeah. signage? Because you don't understand what you're doing. You know, you're crossing um, the when you get to Washington Park, you're actually walking across the, the park and then across the front lawn of the municipal building. The oh, city. Okay. And then when you cross Clarence B. Sharp, you're supposed to go along Clarence, Clarence B. Sharp where um, the um, First Plain Creek culvert is. And then walk up along First Plain Creek, hook up to the Sassicus Nature Preserve. That's, oh. that's all town owned open space, city owned open space, and Earl that drive open yeah. space. And that's a, that's a definitely it's, it's, it, because it's not hard at all. You're yeah. in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Hey, Sydney. Um, I've spent the last 15 minutes trying to get on this Zoom meeting. Uh, I just uh, improvements on the uh, doctor doing the math. Yeah. Show you the times every the waypoints. Again, that's the area that's treated up. I'm sorry. No, no, I, no that's I, fine. It's not taking so long. Yeah. That's so okay. See if I can do it. I can't. I can see only your shoulder and right yeah, arm. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get. There's an attendee. I was trying to bump up, but I can't see who it is. Keeps sounding Joellen, but we unless we lost her. There's something in the chat too. Uh, yeah, that was from earlier, I think. Okay, I guess. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are my comments. Okay. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes from March 17th meeting. So moved. I'll second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, correspondence communications reports. Avalonia, Joella. <laughs> Already, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out who who's on today. All I see is whoever's in the room, and I can't see who that is. And okay, well, uh, Tom Olson is here. Bray, Bruce, and <laughs> <laughs> Deb Jones, and myself. <laughs> Thank you. And Sydney. And, and Sydney, Sydney's, yeah, Sydney's and in view. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, briefly, Avalonia had three successful Connecticut Trail Day hikes on the 4th and 5th, and the Groton hike was on the Leo Antonino Preserve on Antonino Road. All of our other organized hikes and events are on, can be found on the website. There were 1,505 reported property stewardship volunteer hours through May of 2022 across all Avalonia properties um, for a total of $50,205, if anybody wants to know that value. 
and 174 of those stewardship owls were on our Groton properties. Toby Glazer, uh, Groton's part-time stewardship coordinator staff has been successful in organizing a number of volunteer stewardship projects across all the preserves. Um, there's an Avalonia subcommittee that is being that has been charged with developing consistent preserve signage across all properties, such as trailhead signs, preserve public use signage, et cetera. In addition to the hike and seek game information that Avalonia promotes, the Moore Woodlands Trailhead sign has also posted a um, self-guided map for the identification of 12 native Connecticut trees on the property. We have noticed that uh, beech trees are in decline seriously over the past few months. The leaves are curling Ooh. and um, this started, I guess, in New Jersey and it's progressing. And I think from what I heard last night, it's also going to affect the copper beach, which will be a real problem down at Yukon, those gorgeous copper beach. I hope that isn't true. Um, we have a dedication, I guess, coming up on the 26th at 1 p.m with the Herman E. Sheets Far Family Forest Preserve on Putka Road in Nostonington. June is National Rivers Month and the Sheets property dedication is in coordination with the Wood Pocketuck Watershed Seven Rivers Promotion Weekend of the 25th and 26th. I don't think the town of Groton is the only one with open permission uh, positions available by the looks of the bulletin board over there in the hall, <laughs> over by land records. Avalonia has a part-time office manager position open for 20 hours at $20 an hour. If anybody, if you know anybody who's interested. Thank you very much. Got a lot more, but time is essence. Joellen, going back to the beech trees, have they identified any type of cure for that? Because I've noticed one of the beech trees out in front of Spicer House, which is probably a 200 plus old year old tree, is showing signs of curled leaves and, and not the leaves aren't fully developing. Is there do you know if there's anything out there that can be done or is it, are we going to lose our beech trees like we've lost our ash trees? Based on what I heard on Monday evening from one of our stewards, it doesn't appear that they have found any sort of treatment at this time. But I may be wrong. I may have misheard him and I haven't done my own research. So probably whoever the tree warden is in the town of Groton might be your best bet to ask. Is it a disease or is it? I don't know, is it fungus or? Yeah, it's a fungus or, or what? I don't know. It, it, it appears to be affecting the leaves just as yeah. you described. Yeah, they don't open all the way, they curl. I noticed it. Two weeks ago on the beach one was and i think i think those are copper beaches because the leaves are red is that so we've got two huge trees that are 200 plus old one of them the leaves are fully open the other one the leaves are curled so it's a shame to lose that one or both of them look at yukon campus down here at avery point Look at all those copper beach down there. What a, I hope they don't get hit. Yeah. All right. That's it. Okay. You'll send me that report in writing. Am, am I the only one that's doing this, Mark? <laughs> well, I, I can't keep I'm up having a hard time work. hearing Mark. Yeah. Joellen, I, I can't keep up with all of your reports. I don't write that fast. <laughs> Maybe I should just limit all this to just garden. <laughs> what uh, do you think? That might no. not be a bad idea. 
Yeah. All right, uh, cop property, we are looking at changing the, how we label the trails. Uh, right now we're using blazes, but we're looking at um, changing that out and putting um, not only on the cop property, but on Pequot Woods, uh, putting tags on trees. It's more expensive than blazing, but <laughs> are a board member. And the, we continue to utilize board members uh, to hike the cop property each month. And they have a report that they send to us that helps us. If there's a tree down, we don't get a report that says there's a tree down at the cop property where well, there's 14 miles of trails or whatever. So they submit a report and it tells us exactly where. Um, Crosstown Trail um, was, I don't know, Tom, you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, well, I'm here representing B uh, yeah. as far as Crosstown Trail. And <clears throat> things that we're doing right now is obviously we were recognized with the Greenway um, back on the 3rd of June. Uh, and that um, we've, we've done the sign, uh, we've installed signage both at Bluff Point and uh, uh, at Peponic, uh River uh, uh, walkway ahead of that, and we'll be updating that signage uh, to include the greenway markers and stuff for that that section. Uh, so you're going to you're going to put up that sign because I had instructed park staff to put up the sign underneath. Well, if, you, if you're going to do it, I, because it, this is the one section that's joint, right? So, uh, but we're looking at. Uh, on a go forward basis, this is not something imminent. So if you guys are going to do it right now, that's fine. Okay. Um, um, but uh, as far as we'll, as we develop additional signage, here, we're going to incorporate that into our standard signage. Oh, okay. okay. And then with that, we're also probably going. We're looking at uh, putting in a ARPA uh, class here for signage throughout all of our development and that grant. That's because uh, we we uh, met. Uh, we we're having we're still having ongoing discussions with the facilities uh, folks. Uh, they have hired an outside consultant, um, listening. He's investigating both sides of the story from uh, Tri Town Trail as well as the internal staff, and uh, they're still surveying other folks. And uh, his uh, report is. Probably next month, maybe. That move along. Let me see if there's anything else with the new. Signs. And that uh, the question that we had for the general group here was is will there be a fall festival? And uh, if, if there's a booth for either. Uh, for the, the Trails Coordination Task Force and stuff at the Fall Festival? No. The Fall Festival is on pause and likely okay. won't return. Okay. Uh, yeah, we haven't done it in a few years, and the Greater Mr. Hick Chamber of Commerce has moved on to other fundraising events. For Right. Yeah. It was that I told Yeah. Yeah. So that I think is their their new fundraiser. Okay. That was the other question. Thank you very much. That's all we have to try to talk about. All right. Uh Joan. Yeah. Um I really appreciate the ceremony that uh you had for the um recognition of the designation for the um, trails, the greenways. And it was a very nice opportunity to network with a lot of people. Um, I was able to talk to the, I think it was the police chief and asked him 
about how our efforts for a crosswalk between the Merritt and the um, Sea Farm South were coming. And it seems that it's such a dangerous curved place that they would not put a crosswalk in there. And so I said, well, does that mean we all have to take our chances crossing without it, you know, without anything? Uh, and um, essentially that we seem to be, that seems to be the quandary. You were kind of stuck without anything because it's not a safe place for a crosswalk. And he said, you'd have to take the trail the sidewalk up the hill and cross at the light at the top of Fort Hill. Uh, and, you know, that would get us across the street, but it doesn't get us onto the property. Um, we don't have access through the Merritt farmhouse at the top of the hill. That's not our property. You'd have to backtrack over to the water tower or something. Um, so anyway, uh, that was one hope we were trying to get is to get a crosswalk there. Uh, another thing is we are now working on a trail across uh, Sheep Farm South and it will come out by, um, we've got a driveway that's right across from the middle school in the middle of the hill. So of course that's a lousy place to cross too, um, but we have parking for three or four cars. Uh, we're not gonna advertise it as a public place. It'll be for work parties or um, you know, some of the people who really know, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking of people like Maggie Jones and stuff who hike forever. Uh, they're capable of crossing the street and then crossing over and going to, through the schools into Haley Farm. But, um, you know, that too is not a good, a good connection. Uh, and town property does abut the Sheep Farm South um, at Merrill Court going to Pequannock Plains, uh, but that's got a big wetlands and uh, that would be problematic, but it, that might be, if that could be worked out, that it, at least as a traffic wise, a safe connection from that downtown area um, to connect to all the trails. Um, so that I'm just throwing that out as a, as a idea. I haven't, you know, I haven't studied it other than to walk it and realize there's, there is, it's wet and hard to get through. Uh, but uh, I also commend Bruce for walking that whole trail. Uh, I've ridden my bicycle through just about all of the various iterations. And I would say my favorite is to go start at Nautilus and follow the shoreline all the way down to Eastern Point and Avery, uh, uh, Yukon, Avery Point, and then uh, go across Thomas Road and the airport and then back to join the trail. And I think that's a terrific bike route. And you can connect to the highway, um, the bridge crossing. You can, um, there's places to eat. Uh, there's a cheese store and, or, a factory and a brewery and Leonard Drive. Uh, there's, I think um, economic development might want to get in on that, or maybe we could get um, connections if you need money for sponsors for paying for the blazes and the signs and stuff. Maybe the businesses along the way might contribute uh, to the to the cost, um, and they get a little bit of advertising. You know, I'm thinking of. Yeah, the pizza stores and things like that on the way. So, um, okay, but uh, that's that's about it. I, I feel like we've got a little momentum. So I want to thank the Trails Task Force for keeping us going on this and, and pulling everything together. Oh, and on blazes and colors, maybe we could have a, a, a session to collaborate, maybe get a group rate on colors and we're looking for more colors. We just basically have red and blue and yellow, and we have too many trails that everyone gets confused if you keep repeating the same colors, but we haven't found, um, we need some suggestions on other colors that work. We're trying to you know, be considerate of people who are colorblind. We can't use white in the winter. Uh, there's a lot of uh, questions, but 
um, actually labeling, labeling so many trails, uh, we're looking for some creative ideas and maybe all of the trails could put something together or perhaps we could have a blaze, a sign that's just for the cross town trail. Um, and that at least would separate um, from our other colors. Um, so, um, so keep that in mind. I, I think it's, this is a good opportunity for us to collaborate on standardizing our, our blazes and markings. Okay, that's it. I just have one comment to Joan's statement. Uh, one of the things that on the when we're developing the cross town trail, uh, particularly for the biking portion of it, was that if you take a look at the currently issued uh, bike and, and trail master plan, it did not go down to Adrian Plain. Master plan oh. had to be morning commuting advisor and electric boat. That's why the plan is going up Shenikasi. Oh, okay. That's, but I, not to say that that, that it's uh, going to Avery Point could have been. I just had to follow what was on the documents that we have today uh, when I generated this. Yep. Okay, well, that's fine. That, that's fine. I think it's a wonderful, I think that Avery Point has got one of the best views in the world that um, competes with anything. And I, I, I think it's, it's a highlight of our shoreline. Um, so I, maybe we could have an auxiliary thing or have a, a spur or something like that. Um, but I, I, I'd hate to over, hate to not use that. There is, a, there is some flexibility, I understand from you know, in the discussions with what we're having you know, with the application process. And because we still have a lot of data lines on it that right. we can, there's some flexibility as far as I'm, we, we've got this the basic greenway. So if we want to add another loop or an alternative loop, I think we do that yeah. uh, to add the, because I know a lot of, she's not, this is not the first time I've heard this about going down to Avery Point. Uh, yeah. You're just following Eastern Point Road down and, and, and loop back in, into uh, around. Yeah, you're basically following the shoreline all the way back to Bluff Point. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it, Joan? Yep, that's it. I don't know. Sydney may have something. I don't know. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can't I have a diff I have a difficult time hearing you because it's a giant echoing room that you're in. Um next time I will not fight this Zoom thing, which didn't want to let me in. Um I'll just try and go there in person, then I can hear a little better. Joan and I, um, uh, GOSA led um, at, on Trails Day, uh, Sunday um, at the Avery Farm uh, Nature Preserve. We had uh, 20 people. We, we broke up into two uh, groups and Joan even added um, an extra secret area of a dam that nobody that's not on any maps. And we went off in that direction. Um, up there, um, uh, in the fall, Eversource is planning to replace the wooden uh, poles that they replaced when we were trying to raise funds to save uh, uh, the area. Um, and now they're going to replace them with metal. And so there was this great warning about this and we've been in touch with uh, some of the representatives and they will, um, they will get in touch with us um, in the fall and we can walk with them uh, and see what they have in mind and they can see what we have in mind. Um, I have uh, had co comment on the, um, the, uh, it, the event that we all went to for the uh, trails um, event. Um, uh, and I felt that um, the folks that were running it brushed by Avalonia and Gosa on all the trails that we have in many cases fought the battle, raised the funds and bought um, and um, Avalonia as well. And I was sitting with Eric Hammerling and he hardly recognized Eric or the fact that the, um, that the 
Connecticut Forest and Park is the earliest uh, nonprofit um, uh, organization like that. And they have a huge uh, booklet, um, which I'll hold up here, a huge booklet that they put out for 70, that's just the Western end. And in each one of these, um, they have a map in there that you can open up and uh, see where you're going. And um, so uh, we're included in there, but I was really um, uh, a little upset that those guys didn't uh, didn't um, acknowledge them as the real the real uh, leaders in all of that. Um, I have a April article here about tree trails adventures opening in the former field of fire location, and I went by there maybe last week and there was absolutely no one there. There was not one vehicle in the parking lot. And I haven't gone online. I'm not really not interested in doing that, but it is supposedly a trail system in the town of Groton close to uh, Whittles actually. So um, that's another one. Uh, we've, had, we've had stuff on um, the, what to do with the Carl Cutler School. And um, one of the uh, things that I brought out um, that, they weren't really aware of was, let's see if I can get this map up here. Okay, the, the orange mark with the circle around it is Carl Cutler School. And that was at the March 10, 2010 storm. It was more than a hundred year storm. It was like a 500 year storm, but- uh, uh, Wait, Excuse me, I think you made Claude Chester. Colchester School. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Anyway, it, I've, I've sent this out to a number of the various um, institutions here, and none of them seem to be aware that this was put together by the planning department right after that storm. And it has great effect on, on well, climate change, but this wasn't even called climate change. This was called just the disaster areas. I also dug out the uh, open space map that I have, and it's dated 2018, but it doesn't do a very good job of saying where, let's see, where did it go? Whoop, 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 there we go. Uh, it doesn't really um, identify clearly where Avalonia properties are and uh, by color, it just has some blotches, other blotches beside the Gosa green, and it doesn't even include all of that. So it would really be nice to have um, to upgrade this so that when when we do the trails, I came across a very nice trail map, uh, but it was so old um, and it was so unclear that if somebody uh, even who's been here a long time is looking through there, it isn't really clear where these trails are. So along with walking it and looking at the labels, and by the way, uh, somebody in Gosa has been, uh, I used to paint the, the areas, but it sure is a lot better to see a plastic, uh, a, a piece of plastic and whatever the color is with a nail top and bottom to identify where the trail is rather than paint. So I guess that's it. Oh, and the data center. <laughs> the data center issue um, is not gone away, but at least it stopped. And so our are the threat of, of, of total damage to the reservoir is um, uh, put aside uh, briefly. Um, I've, I've uh, been at a number of their hearings and made representation. I now have in um, uh, a, a, a letter, hold, just shortly, this is just short. I have a short letter into um, uh, the the guys running the the water quality in this in this town have n I wanted to know and maybe and somebody out here in these this audience knows when they uh, dug the pipes under the Thames River to take water from our reservoir to share with the other side of the river. I would like to get that information. All right. Anything else related to trails? 
Okay. Of, but before we go, Cindy, the, the tree trails that you referenced that used to be fields of fire, that's actually an aerial ropes course. It, it's not a trail system in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on to town trail. Great news during the budget process, thanks to the council and the RTM, they have approved uh, funds to update the trail, we're calling it the Community Connectivity Master Plan. So essentially we're updating the bike and pedestrian plan from 2004 or five. Things went back a little bit. Right, yes. Uh, so uh, we're excited about that. It will likely start probably next spring. Uh, and go through the summer and into the fall because that's when more people engagement process will probably be higher because there's more hiking. Recording. Recording. Okay. All right. Oh, it maybe it's. Hello. So anyway, that uh, that is uh, is good news. Uh, we're working with Deb and a couple of other and uh, also Bumgarner, uh, Brian Kent, Kent Cross, Ray Canover. Who else is on? Cindy Barry from Westlake Health District. Oh, Al. yeah. We're working. They're working on developing a complete street policy uh, that doesn't necessarily directly try high end trails, but we're all talking about, you know. Uh, hey, Sydney, could you mute yourself, please? I'm gonna have to hang up. I don't know what's going on here. Sydney, could you try muting yourself? Okay. okay. Your screen and the little microphone will show up. You can mute with that. Please. Done a lot of All right. <laughs> All right. So we are uh, working on developing a complete streets policy, which would get timing wise. Someone are we competing again? So timing wise, I think this may work out pretty well because we would have a complete street policy in time for the community connectivity work on the project, which would incorporate the policy recommendation. No, that's uh, right. I, mean, I, think, I think we're pretty close to getting yeah. a draft and go to the council right. for adoption. Yeah. 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 So timing wise, that Well, um, one other thing is uh, we've completed the connection from. I never can remember the name of that port. Knoxville. Knoxville. Thank you. From Knoxville. Yeah over to industrial drive that uh, bike path has been finally connected and i went to the traffic 
Authority last week and got approval for uh, signage that's going to go along Midway Oval, uh, Depot Road, and Industrial Drive, and just have a stout lady who's purchasing all the signs and uh, things that are just installed all over the place. Town engineer, or one of the engineers is working on developing the white path that's going to go through Sutton Park and then out to that's kind of an update on town trails and tri town yeah, you had me report instead of the cross town trail. Oh, that's true. That's true. I think I yeah. got order. All right. Um, I don't know that we really have anything to report. Well, the only thing I would recommend reporting, as I, as I discussed with you at the event, was that as far as the overall signage, oh, this, yes, oh, right. That was what I was yeah, waiting yeah. to be discussed, right? You know, as far as but as this is a task force that we probably should be taking ownership because. Right. This uh, has well, Avalonia as part of the Crosstown Trail. Brown Ghost is part of the Crosstown right. Trail. The town bike system is here. Yeah. Uh, so we have all the advocacy people are here that right. have a, a, a portion of this uh, freeway right. and right. the proper marketing, marketing like Joan had brought up. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we should put on the discussion here. Yeah. For maybe for the next meeting or a special yeah, meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To have that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We So, thinking a special meeting, or that would be the primary topic of discussion? Well, one of the things that we need to, uh, as far as from an agenda perspective, and we can look at as far as, I don't know what we're going to be ready to discuss things, as far as also the interfacing, um, you know, of what the expectation is for marking along this so that the Tritown Trail is right. consistent with what yeah. the Crofttown Trail, so from a greenway, an overall greenway marking perspective. Because we don't really have any guidelines from the state. There's no requirements that we have to put something every 250 feet or something like that. Yeah. There's no requirements for that. Right. They just would like us if they, if we can if, uh, to have signage to say that it is a greenway, so that you know, you know, or in our advertising or some type of uh, publication that you know. Yeah, yeah. I know that uh, Ray has been working with the Fish Commission on different. And I know that NOAA at GIS has been working on updating the maps and stuff. So, right. Uh, so we're not required this, if we incorporate the logo that the Connecticut Greenways uses right. or has, that would be heard, but we don't yeah. necessarily, it doesn't have to be just. No, I agree. You could have, you could just say kind of incorporate it into, you know, that's what the yeah. Tritown Trail is looking at. Because we have to go through three different towns here, and so right. from the Tri Town perspective, we are looking. We have a logo for the Tri Town Trail. Yeah. What's basically on my hat here? We have signs. Yeah. Uh, with, that was along, and, it, it, and that's what we posted right. uh, down at Bluff Point and in, in the Quantic River. Um, and we put, and we posted those up in, in Ledger also, right. and in right. Preston. We have yeah. signs uh, in those locations ready. But we're updating. We're looking at how to update that to incorporate. Both our logo as well as the Connecticut Greenway into that. Right. That's what I was reporting earlier. Right. As far as on how to do that, right. I'd like to probably be consistent with how the town of Ground is doing its crosstown on the Greenway. But now, Ledger uh, Great Oak um, Greenway doesn't really have any markings on it per se. It's just the way that they set their things up. Okay. Um, and so we don't really have, and, and as far as the, in Preston, when, at the other end, when we hook up to it, uh, it's all part of the, the greenway up there is really the blue trail system, and that doesn't really, they haven't incorporated the greenway uh, into theirs because they had already existed beforehand. Oh, they were just grandfathered in as a as a greenway. Right. When they started the whole yeah. system up. So, uh, so there's no, there's actually not a requirement. No, they, 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 it's just when I, when, when I was at, at the time of approval that they just recommended right. that we incorporate it into your sign. You have authority to, to use it and come yeah. with the, with, when they gave us the award per se, you can now include our thing on your, in, into your uh, branding. Right. I wonder if there's a kind of like a, you said that the state doesn't have any guidelines for Perhaps New Jersey or Maine or someplace else has 
kind of suggested Greenway guidelines, like you said. The only other one that only, you know, is the, the, there's the, the East Coast Greenway, they, they, they're the other Greenway that we're not competing with, but is a major player within Connecticut. We're one of the 13 states that, that, that it goes through. Yeah. Um, and that's all up in like Colchester along, uh, oh, that's okay. our, and, and Hartford, then down to Farmington, um, yeah. to New Haven, and, and out. There, that's the part we go the East Coast Greenway. They have signage also. They have it blue over, I mean, uh, green over white for the, uh, the pine tree type of thing. Okay. Uh, sign. So, and this more of a direction finding uh, thing. They'll, they'll actually say how many miles to the Key West and how much up to Calais, Maine. Oh, okay. They put that actually as part of their branding protection. Uh, that's the only other greenway per se from a city or from another state, but we're we're just authorized under the Connecticut State Greenway Council here, and they have no requirement as far as for okay. branding. So I'm just going to throw something. Out. We the department worked with landing uh, Drive 55 Pass. So I know some people like that name. Uh, but there are people out there that do that. Maybe it would make sense for us to bring somebody in mm -hmm. with all of these different groups to come up with, okay, here's how we're going to approach, here's the process that we're going to go through to reach agreement. And we want to hear from this group and this group and this group and then work through this process to kind of formulate, okay, this is how we're going to plan. Two trails that run, or the two greenways rather that run through drive. I don't know if uh, feedback on, on that. Uh, well, this is the first I'm thinking about it. Uh, you yeah. know, as far as talking for the Tri Town Trail, that's the hat I'm wearing. Yeah. Um, we're we're really to support you on, on okay. that type of initiative because I think okay, uh, it, it could get maybe an outside first foot. If, right. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Otherwise, it could just be a lot of. If there's a neutral party, then right. that may alleviate the, well, I want it this way and I want it this way, and they could kind of work through that whole process. All right. Uh, Joan, did you hear any of that? Yeah, I'm listening and I'm interested. Um, we're at a decision point on in our, um, of what to do with our labeling. Uh, we're going to be um combining like sheep farm and sheep farm south and redoing our trail maps and um we you know and it it's kind of confusing if we're trying to then hook up to merit and the others right. if trails go every direction um we need something that makes it very clear this is the the crosstown trail um and i don't know would we keep the identity separate or, and then have an over a logo, a Greenways logo above that? So, you, you know, they all know it's part of the same system, but you've got the Crosstown Trail and the Tri Town right. Trail. Yeah, maybe there's like a, a unifying color or symbol that people recognize, but there's also some flexibility to differentiate between, okay, now I'm on Gosa property or town property, but I know based on this particular symbol or a color that it's still a, a trail open to the public. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that might yeah. be. Or if we have, we could have a, a cross town and a Greenways logo together or, and then a Tri-Town and Greenways logo together. I mean, they well, could be. Yeah, I mean, that that's something that I think the branding expert could yeah. kind of work through and say, well, you don't want, it's, if you're trying to brand things, you want one unified logo and color scheme. I mean, that's what we've done in our department is everything that we put out uh, falls within a certain palette of colors and the same logo is used all the time. Uh, so right. having having a, one logo for this trail and another logo for this trail may be well, my concern is against it's, the idea of branding. They're, well, they're going in different directions. Tri towns north and south, and cross town is, well, yeah. that kind of curves around, but it's basically right. east west. 
Um, yeah, but then you're making the assumption that, well, they're only going to go on that one trail. And if they get on a different trail, well, now the, everything's different. And yeah, so I think these are things that perhaps a, a, a branding expert could kind of work through. Yeah, and we were wondering if we expand northward or something, um, if that could get included too, or if that makes it too confusing. Um, you know, we've basically been working on a green belt that goes north to south, um, yeah. you know, going from Merritt to sheep farm, south to sheep farm. And if you go through culverts, you end up up by Kennelwood Hill, uh, wildlife management area. Um, so at least as the crow flies, it's a green way. Um, uh, so that may be outside of the scope of, of the um, greenways, I don't know. Um, if greenways is just a trail system or if greenways is a green belt. Um, that's, I'm, I'm not sure about that. State of Connecticut is the, the, what we basically got approved in the map, okay? What you need to also be taking a look at what from the, uh, the conservation uh, plan um, talks about the plan, plan of the conservation development talk about green belts, okay? And that's really, I think what you're discussing here is that ownership of properties and that type of stuff that are continuous open space areas develops into a green belt, okay? So that, that's a different animal than the green, yeah. than the greenways then? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we made it, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure of definitions or what, um, you know, concepts, so that helps. Having the overall one symbol, okay, it's a trail. And, right. then, and then, you know, various symbols, colors, whatever, to right. differentiate right. You know, which trail it is. Yeah. You could even say which town it is if you're doing, you know, the tri right. town right. trail. And, right. But, but yeah, it's, it's beyond us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think we Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, <laughs> Like something Tom was saying, could could Noah come in and right. mark our existing maps with sure. and whether we put a little symbol on it or not, but just so that like following it, like oh. field maps, they can just bring up the field maps app and they yeah. have the whole trail that's marked out right clearly. And you can just do a yeah, I think but that, I think what you want Noah to, to brand it with is what Mark is saying. Yeah, it's it's branding is the first step here. Yeah. Right. But right. Noah can then follow that. As far as on, on so, GIS, yeah, yeah. whatever, you mark that up on the GIS and right. you follow it. I mean, that field right. map app works really, really well. Yeah. And yeah, okay. In there, okay. Trails level, I think, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Right. Uh, no, it's not. I, can, I can reach out to who we used. Um, Probably we'll have to go through a bid process. And oh, we got a couple more days for ARPA to get a price. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll make a phone call tomorrow. And I may be at the last hour asking for letters of support from. We're giving you <laughs> From the yeah. Woods, from, yeah, Tri Town Trails, Groton Open Space. And uh, Avalonia just to build a case for this. Yeah, and you could make the case that everyone went outdoors during COVID. That this yeah. is the yeah, and, and community connectivity is one of the highest uh, interests based on the 2020 recreational needs assessment. Okay. Better connectivity and, uh, and the. Community connectivity master plan will also help address it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else that anybody wanted to bring up? Yeah. I thank you, Mark, for I think you're showing leadership that uh, brings us together and and helps us work through all these. Um, disparate groups, uh, you're bringing us together. So I think that's yeah. um, terrific. All right, well, thank you. Uh, and I'll keep everybody up to date on what's, what's going on.
what's going on as, as far as uh, now we wouldn't be able to, I think my understanding of the timeline for ARPA is the long-term recovery committee and, and council by the 30th yeah, right the 30th, and, and then recovery. yeah and then it takes uh, right. yeah so the timeline for this um would be late August, September, before we know if we got approval for the project and and then we would start from there. So this is not something, don't expect that we're going to have something started probably before November. Yeah, but don't just ask, ask for more than just the branding expert, ask for money to pay for the signs and the blazing and uh, publicity and brochures and all that, uh, you know, ask for everything. You might not get it all, but ask for, ask, you know, throw, throw everything in there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can, how much is there? 8 million? <laughs> <laughs> well, we need it. In that case, we need a bridge over Fort Hill Brook uh, going towards uh, Pequannock, Planes. <laughs> and we're already the Tri Towns are asking for their signage. We just want to be consistent. Okay. Right. So you're asking for the town across it's probably right. five. I mean, like I say, we're we're Tri Town is putting in a request in for five hundred dollars signage. Okay. Thousand dollars a mile. Okay. All right. All right. Well, oh, can I have a motion? No, oh, I'm not sure when the next meeting is September. So the next meeting is in September. I don't remember the date. Okay. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, I will. And we'll certainly be in touch before that. Uh, can I get a the 15th? Okay. Thanks, Deb. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Move. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meeting is adjourned at five o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank yeah. you. Have a good summer if I don't see you. Okay. See you in September, if not before. Next week, not on the uh, posted. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I have to get the readings for the entire year. Yeah, but they, for some reason, I'm looking at Shell's information task force. Uh, I'm looking at the 15. They have Atlantic, Flat, Flat, Atlantic Field, HMC, and PSD. Huh. Nobody does all of it. Which one are you looking at? The one on the, this is on, on the town on the website. On the town website. Yeah. I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is the one that's the the public. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. No, no, it's true. I think on the clerk's website, she has all of the all of the meetings that yeah.